Hunters, welcome back to another Flushing and Dustin podcast. Switching up a little tonight and heading more down the waterfall lane. Uh, we have Wade Skeen with Skeen Outfitters out of Kansas tonight. Uh, he does guided waterfowl hunts, retriever training. It's a veteran-owned business, family-operated, so we're super excited uh, to have Wade on. You can find him on Instagram at Skeen Outfitters, that's S-K-E-E-N outfitters all one word um so go check him out uh, but again we're happy to have him on i actually met wade through uh the cornerstone gun dog academy program um <clears throat> it seemed like he was the guy that would always answer my questions and then i sent him some <laughs> private facebook messages i was probably that like annoying little brother mm-hmm. that uh asked him a shit ton of questions and he was uh <laughs> Nice enough to respond back and give me guidance. So, but what Haley doesn't know is Tyler does this to a lot of people. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the good thing is, is I can bullshit about dogs any day of the week. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, but Wade, if you want to introduce yourself, and uh, we'll take it from there. Yeah, man. Thanks for having me on. I appreciate talking with both y'all. Uh, Wade Ski is my name. I'm originally from uh, Grenada, Mississippi. Uh, joined the Air Force when I was about 17. Uh, did that gig for 22 years, uh, lived in Louisiana, Hawaii for five years, uh, got stationed in Kansas about 10 years ago in a month. Um, and my wife and I were here for just a few days and we said, yeah, we're never, we're never leaving this place. Uh, and that was, and that was before hunting season even started. So, uh, you know, pretty much tells you everything you know about that. It wasn't, it's not like a big destination place like Hawaii was. We don't have the visitors we did there. Yeah. But, uh, but as far as man, a place to raise a family and stuff like that, cost of living is good. People are awesome. Um, and then the hunting speaks for itself. So really kind of fell in love with the place here, got involved with the local community through DU and uh, some other stuff like that. And, you know, kind of went from there. Uh, retired from the Air Force about... 15 16 months ago um kind of yeah kind of your service oh appreciate it man i I mean i enjoyed it i'm happy to be done (laughs) uh but but i enjoyed my time i enjoyed i got to deploy a lot and you know see a lot of the world and, and stuff like that so it was definitely cool um but i i do enjoy my freedom i have now to kind of do what i want to and not be on the hook for for commitment like that but uh but, that's a hell of a commitment uh, but we thank you <laughs> appreciate it but uh yeah so kind of kind of knew i wanted to do something in the outdoor industry i mean really since i was a kid um but i didn't really know where that was going or anything and then uh probably about five years ago it, it got to the point where I, I got to thinking about it more and more and i was like man i you know I get to keep my insurance when I get done with the military and I've got my retirement pay and kids college is taken care of. I was like, why the hell would I go work for somebody else, man? What do I want to do? Yeah. And I kind of, I kind of guided some waterfowl hunts, helping out some other guys a little bit, did it on my own a couple, couple of seasons, just kind of part time. And uh, it was kind of a freak accident where um, a buddy of mine that owns an outfitter here, not too far away was booked up. They were, he had guys call it and needed a needed a hunt. He called me up and said, Hey man, if you got vacation, would you mind taking these guys out? I was like, sure, you know, no problem. So I took them out for three days or four days, killed a bunch of ducks and you know, made a little bit of money. And I was like, wow, okay. So <laughs> I really can make a living doing what I love to do. Yeah. And uh so it kind of went from there, man. And so about uh, 18 months, 12 months out from when I knew I was retiring, I kind of started putting the putting the pieces in place for setting up um you know booking hunts and and stuff like that and i'd already been training dogs on the side a little bit you know as really as people ask me to and as as i could take them on um so you know the more i got thinking about it's like well i can guide hunts in the in the fall and the winter and and then i can train dogs in the spring and the summer and luckily i got a badass wife that was game for all that bullshit that comes need, with that you need those, that those support wives. man yeah, that's the main man. thing wives, sir they they make it i mean they make it or break yeah. it I'll tell you what yeah especially especially i mean you know when you hear guys talk about the amount of work it takes to to be a guy like it, 
it's no bullshit. It's 14, 16, 18 hour days, you know, for, for months on end really. Um, and if, if you don't truly to your core, love it, you're, you're gonna hate it. Um, but to have, but to have a family that supports that is a real, real blessing. You can't, you can't well, do that. Yeah. And you got a wife that can, she can take some kick-ass photos too. Well, I mean, she yeah. probably shoots better than Tyler. So, I mean, what a wife. <laughs> you know, probably. So, funny enough, man, my wife has not hunted yet. She she's really hasn't even oh. shot very much. Yeah, like she – I've taken her back, like, I can't remember when it was, but right after we got married, I was getting deployed for four or six months or some shit like that. And, you know, I took her out and taught her how to shoot a shotgun and a pistol and, and stuff. But finally – uh, she's been on a ton of duck hunts with us, taking pictures and and just you know kind of spectating. And, but I, it was like a month ago, and I don't even remember what it was. But we had some turkeys gobbling at us off in the distance, and she was like, "Man, that's really cool. I kind of want to, I kind of want to hunt turkeys." I was like, "Quit!" You know, like all these years we've been married for, geez, like I don't know, a long time. Two, you've oh, been married seven, for two years now. Seven, seven, <laughs> yeah, seven, 17 years, I think. 17 yeah. years that next month. So we've been married for a long time. And she's really, you know, she's never really had much desire to, to pick up a gun and be a part of the hunt. She enjoys going. Um, she's trained her own retriever, nice. ran her in hunt tests. Like, she she's involved in the process. But the actual shoot never really interested her until here recently. So I think we'll be getting her out on a turkey hunt. Really yeah, soon. so... So, like, me and my wife, uh, we've been together seven years, married four, seven, four, yeah, that's right, I think that's right, and then uh, I actually started her, she wanted to learn to hunt, because I had Diesel, who's getting, yeah, that's right, because Diesel's going to be eight this year, um, so I had her, him a year before I met her, and uh, she wasn't all sure about it, but I took her out, and Diesel's actually, like, a pointing lab, so he'll point. Yeah. It naturally just <laughs> to do it. He just he'll, he'll yeah, pull up and he'll just and 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 he'll hold it for you know 15, 20 seconds. It's not like it's yep. a super long flash point, whatever you want to call it. But, but it's, it's obvious. Enough. And she ended up fucking shooting her first couple birds, and she was like, "Oh God, this is the best thing ever." And then she ended up getting well. We ended up having this plunge. We got pregnant, yep. and I took her out one time, and she's like. This fucking sucks. <laughs> she, was, she was like six weeks pregnant. She's like, I'm not, or six months pregnant. I'm not doing this again. I'm so out of breath. Uh, so I mean, I, 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 I get the whole. Uh, it's a fun cascade to run them through, and and uh, uh, my wife has the bug. It just it's hard with two littles that we have going oh, on right yeah. now. Our kids are. We got one 15 year old, one nine year old, and 15 year old daughter. She likes to hunt as long as it's not in the morning. Um, and then my nine-year-old son is pretty much my shadow. He goes, he goes everywhere I go as long as he doesn't have to be at school. Yeah. Um, so, so you know, he's he's constantly hunting and stuff. But, um, but yeah, I was I was kind of surprised. It took me it took me off guard when she when she said she was ready to go hunting because she's the only one in the family now that that really hasn't. So, pretty pretty pumped about that. She can't bitch at me about being out hunting if she's there too. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, speaking of your son, did he get his first turkey, or who is that walking down the train tracks on your? Oh no, that's man, that's AJ Cardona. He's a grown man. He just looks okay. Like a kid. I didn't know who that was. I was <laughs> like, he looks a little bigger than nine years old. But... <laughs> no, my son killed his first turkey when he was six. He uh, nice. Yeah, matter of fact, he had just turned six like less than a month before that, um, and he killed probably the biggest turkey he'll ever kill in his life too. It's like. 13 inch beard inch and a half spur but probably bigger than either bigger than any turkey i've ever killed or maybe bigger than all of them except for one so yeah he killed a monster turkey for his very first one so yeah that's awesome yeah what uh so going back to the the outfit what's the groundwork like to even get something like that off the ground I mean, obviously, you, you know some people down there, but yeah, it well, is I mean, be... it, it's it's real state dependent on that too, because like in Kansas, for instance, there's really not a lot of state mandated guidelines uh, to be an outfitter. It's kind of you know free reign, I guess, if you want to call it. Which, all right, let's be real. If that's a good thing and that's a bad thing, 
I yeah, mean, yeah. I'm, I'm about as pro-gun, less government, conservative dude as you'll ever meet for the most part. But at the same time, without any sort of regulation, it allows any Tom, Dick, and Harry to just say, oh, yeah, I'm an outfitter. And then, of course, that kind of, you know, when they get shady guides, that kind of gives them a bad impression for all of us. Yeah. Um, but so, you know, but different states vary, you know, some states require a license and permits and, and things like that. You know, maybe it wouldn't be a bad thing here in Kansas if we had some sort of minimum guidelines, but obviously that's a slippery slope. But, yes. um, but outside of that, man, you know, really the biggest thing is just connections. I mean, it's, you know, to book up your hunt, your first season, like we did, was is really i mean in my opinion i i think that's kind of a fluke but yeah. we had been so involved with everything up to that point that you know it, it kind of led up to it naturally without in the early parts of of the process i that wasn't even my intention it was just kind of okay cool this tyler dude asked the question in this duck hunting group and i gave him some yeah. feedback as far as you know what i, I mean do. you're you're probably just like dude's a dumbass but i'll help out yeah he's a dumbass <laughs> but i'm not an asshole so yeah. you know it's just it is what it is you know but so and no really completely joking tyler's <laughs> tyler uh tyler's uh much are you talking about me trainer <laughs> yeah you what you're talking about uh, but, uh, yes, fucking uh he's uh He's a great trainer. Uh, I've only learned from trainers that I've had trained my dogs. When I need to know something, I usually don't even go back to my trainers anymore. I talk to Tyler about just, it. Like, just ask hey, Tyler. <laughs> and, then I ask it, Wade, and, then and then I ask Wade. And then I find out. So I'm like, hey, yeah, hey, look, out, right? Just cut out the middleman and shoot me a message. Just cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, by no means do I claim to be a professional. Uh, or, Tyler, hey, Tyler, could probably, Tyler probably could be a pro professional. He could probably do it. That's the he cool could thing about dog training, though, man. It doesn't matter how long you do it. You learn something new every time. Every every oh, dog's God. different. Like, it's, yeah. I mean, it, you know, it's just just like people. They all got personalities. And if you're not, yeah. you know, if you're not. Every, every that, wife's different, too. I mean, I've only had one, but I'm sure <laughs> if I had another one, it would be different. <laughs> yeah, I only have one. And I'm gonna keep it, I, I want to keep it that way. <laughs> I, I do, too. I do, too. Yeah, no shit. But, <laughs> uh, but no nah, man really the the, the outfit inside of, i mean it took off pretty well um first how many season, hunts are you doing a year man so i knew you're gonna ask me that um <laughs> we probably did i think we probably did let's see four probably did about 24 groups my cat just decided to join us we probably did 24 groups the first year oh. and then i think we did like 42 groups last year Holy because we shit. do we do two consecutive groups my cat is like legit about to come up here on the desk that's all right this so wade wandered not, up when not he's a, like eight weeks old and he's kind of cool not a big uh <laughs> duck hunter i i used to be a big duck hunter not anymore what are the limits and are they per species <laughs> on there um, like is it so, so many so, so many dra so many mallards so many woods yeah. so many and, and what are you shooting mostly like what what's so pr what's the primary primarily, species primarily we're going to shoot mallards and canada geese in my area okay. of kansas um and you know we fall in the central flyway just like this cat for real just open that door and i mean in there. your dog <laughs> trainer have a cat i mean i think yeah. that explains it <laughs> but uh but so we can kill we can kill six ducks here uh five of which can be mallards and then you know, we, we get gadwall and pintail and green wing teal a good bit, widgeon, uh, Canada geese, speckle belly geese, a few snows. Um, but but 75% of our ducks, maybe even closer to 85, are, are going to be mallards. Um, and but then the, the when, part of which time of year does the migration start? So, like, I agree. So, it doesn't happen. All the flyways have changed. Yeah. Um, and you, you, yeah, and you, probably realize that but like so i'm originally from guttenberg iowa lived on the mississippi my whole life and we used to duck hunt and shoot the shit out of the fucking ducks opening morning literally 20 30 minutes we'd be letting it out done yeah 
um, now you go out there. When's, and it, when's it open up there? I believe Teal opens September first. Uh, September first, and then, and then there's a then there's a break, and then there's a little bit of goose hunting in there for a couple for a week or two, and then uh, and it's like and then it's like October first weekend yeah. in October something like that. Yeah, um, yeah so that's, then, you, that's then it's open. To us. Yeah, Which that's it's, pretty similar it, to us because we have, but we so our our Kansas is broken up into four zones. Um, we have the western third of the state is it's it's kind of its own zone. I don't, I don't hunt out that way much, so I don't. It doesn't really pertain to me. But then we have three zones, basically within an hour of where I am. So if you go north about an hour, we have the the high or the low plains early zone that opens the first Saturday in October. Um, and then now we do have teal prior to that, but um, then where I live is low plains late. That's going to open basically the Saturday before Halloween. Um, and then we have the Southeast zone, which is going to be a week to two weeks behind that one. Um, so, I mean, that's kind of the cool thing about Kansas is if you count teal and late goose, you can literally waterfowl hunt in the state of Kansas from September 15th ish to February 15th ish, uh, with the exception of yeah. I think one weekend. Uh, now all that being said, that October, time frame i mean it's not productive you, or it's not really productive let me put it that way but you, you know you and a buddy can go out and shoot 10 or 12 ducks um it happens um now when the migration happens for us i would say at this rate it's pretty hard to say honestly but typically it was about december 15th would when, would be when we would really start seeing a big push of mallards in my part of the state. Um, and then that would kind of run through middle of January before it kind of topped off. Um, the last two years has been even later than that. Um, not last year, but year before last. I can honestly say I don't think we hit peak mallard migration until early February after duck season was closed. Um, yeah. which you know it, it is what it is it's the weather weather and it's gonna weather so yeah um i mean but, this, i mean we haven't even hit spring yet here in iowa it just is, no I, same if morning. it's nice out we got 90 mile hour winds and if it's, <laughs> it's cold it fucking yeah. sucks it's been hell on crappie fishing and, and turkey on at this point oh yeah but, Do you, i mean now Go ahead. If you so, the reason I bring this up is because my wife actually just told me about um, the guy that she works with went to Argentina and did quail hunting or not quail hunting, uh, yes. dove hunting. Yeah, dove hunting yeah. and shot, shot like Jesus. I don't even know how many birds. Yeah, oh, thousands, hundreds, hundreds. Yeah, thousands yeah. of birds. Like it was just, yep. he spent $1,800 on shells. <laughs> yeah, so that's usually where they like, get you. Yeah, so crazy amounts. Do you supply, like, say, if you have a newbie coming in, just wants to get in a duck hunt, um, your guy, <laughs> do you supply gun shells, obviously for cost, but do you supply that kind of thing? I, is yeah, that, I is, can. That, is that normal? Is that normal? Is that, is not, that normal not, not for my crowd. Um, like, I legitimately, when, when, when we started this out, my wife and I sat down and we looked at it like, we looked at the, you know, the competitors that we admire, that we aspired to be similar to, so, so many of which are my friends. Um, and we were looking at their prices, and we were like, all right, this is the ballpark we want to be in. But rule number one when it came to pricing was we don't ever want to price out real duck hunters. So, like, that's who I want coming to hunt with me. Um, you know, obviously every group has a couple of new guys, which is freaking awesome because we need all the new guys we can get. But yeah. most of my guys show up because they're badass duck hunters in their own right. They just live somewhere where duck numbers aren't that plentiful and they want to come out here and shoot ducks with us. Um, you know, I get guys from PA or South Carolina or Georgia or, you know, some places like that. And these dudes are grinders, man. They're not, they're not bullshitting around about it. They have everything they need. They just don't have mallards where they live. So that's why they come hunt with them. So what, is, what about if, like, uh, Tyler and I decide, like, so we're more upland, but we've, yep. like, obviously we've done, we've done duck hunting and the waterfall game. 
what, what's what's that look like for us? It's the do same. We bring, right? do, we, do we bring our dogs? Do you not want us to bring our dogs? No, um, we I guess that's we, we encourage guys to bring their dog. Um, you know, we kind so of my dog's not steady as shot, so we need to tie that fucker down. Yeah, and, and and so be it. By the end of the season, I'm tying my dog down because she's picked up 500 birds and she breaks yes. by the end of January because we're too damn busy to try to train. So you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna walk over there and say, hey, bud, let's tie him up because. I don't want an accident being on my hands and I don't want you losing your friend. So look over there. My dog's on a tie out too. Yeah. Let's, let's keep it safe. There's no big deal with it. And, and, you know, we go on about our hunt. Um, nice. I use yeah, the, the gun dog outdoors, that quick release system yep. that he has. Yep. They're, they're I awesome. use that and it's, man, it was a lifesaver this year. And like you said, was switching between upland and waterfowl and then they get on so many birds. It's like, they know when the guns go off and the dog and the birds are dropping. It's like eventually, like I said, I don't Upland have time. hunting is like the most detrimental thing in the yeah. world to like having a really, really high end retriever, whether you're talking about waterfowl hunting or running the hunt test game, because they, I mean, they just get so conditioned to flush, shot, boom, go get the retrieve. Yep. Yeah. Um, and, and they break down when you're trying to send them on lines on blinds. You know, yeah. that you send them on that, they hit 30 yards and a piece of cover, and they're like, oh, quail, you know. Yeah. And so you're like, no, push, push, <laughs> push. But so yeah, like, actually, I, uh, <laughs> like Diesel, so I, I, I ran him in uh, HRC hunt tests. Uh, so he has, a, he has a title on him. But originally, I was hunting um, the Mississippi, like I said. So, like, the very first picture I have of him, he retrieved a teal in the Mississippi, open waters stream flowing down like uh it was fantastic and then i ended up getting a job and moved and then everything just kind of switched and now i've just adapted to the uplands right and i went back to gutberg to hunt with him but fuck there ain't nothing there <laughs> yeah well that makes it tough and it's on its own yeah yeah so he's just completely converted to uh an upland dog which He'd be a much better duck goose dog. He's a big, he's a big son of a bitch. Um, so he's got the, he's got the power and the strength to carry his geese and duck. But so are y'all well, primarily hunting wild birds or more pen raised preserved type? Wild, birds? wild. Oh. Come on, wait. Yeah. Hey, Fuck look, I'm an equal are. opportunity. Hey, <laughs> this isn't, this isn't raised podcast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we uh, we do both. I mean, we got we got wild pheasant and wild quail um but it's not really in numbers where i feel right charging people to hunt them it's just not guaranteed like that now yeah. i will say we get some people that are just like purists which is which is understandable they're like no i don't care i don't care if we only shoot five birds if we go out there and my dogs get to chase wild quail or wild pheasant then we'll pay whatever um so we do, i mean we do that and then we do planted birds too so i don't i so i've never killed a wild quail before until last season and nice. oh I didn't re yeah I didn't it's exciting up, isn't it up, oh dude i i swear to god i wish that season didn't coincide <laughs> with waterfowl the way it does because i mean i fell in love with that just i it just blew my mind it's crazy how like waterfall like because i've done it so there's a love there and mm -hmm. like you get that love for this and i did it for a few years with and we had uh, uh brian sermson he was on one of our podcasts he was he was uh, my high school basketball coach my high school teacher and we went all the time and he was a dog trainer as well inspired me to get my dogs inspired me to nice. train him went with him all the time like that's what we did so i loved it and then kind of did a little started doing the uplands and it was like oh shit like i like whoa this is cool i mean it's yeah. amazing when you start like mixing and going through it and like you know i don't really honestly if i had a pick i don't really know which one i'd pick if if i could have all the beaks for duck hunting and goose hunting without cost then i could do bird hunting and all the land i don't know which one i'd pick because I they're mean, both phenomenal I'll, yeah, they're both I'll, phenomenal I'll, I'll never, I'll never pick anything over cuffed up yeah. green heads with their feet down in the decoys. But if I would, I mean, I would absolutely hunt the shit out of quail 
if the season didn't overlap. But yeah. you know, but the cool but the cool thing is is there's a lot of days where we we waterfowl hunt in the morning and then go upland hunt in the afternoon. So it's kind of the Very best fun. of both worlds. But you know it, it's just is upland that a, hunting is is kind of you know just a bonus deal for us. Is that a package you guys offer then? Is to yeah. do that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We do we do uh, it's just an add on. Okay. It's two, two, it's two fifty a day, um, or two fifty for an add on upland hunt. And you know, it's up to the client. If they if they want to do pen raise guaranteed shooting, cool, I'll put birds out for you. Um, you know, if you are more interested in putting in the putting in the steps and, and kicking up wild birds, then so be it. But I still gotta pay land owners. So it yeah, it ends up it ends up kind of the same in the watch whether i'm buying birds or or paying for permission so it doesn't it doesn't change anything there on my side me personally i want to go hunt wild birds because that's i mean yeah i get to shoot i yeah i get to shoot plenty let's see if i can you know let's 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 put my dog to the test you know i got a four-year-old four-year-old british lab and like dude she she's i mean she's flushed pheasant before and, and stuff like that but she hit her stride last year. I mean, oh, which, did she? Four, we're about to be five. Okay. Um, but she didn't. I mean, I didn't really start up one hunting her till, I mean, really two years ago was the first year that I up one hunted with any consistency. Um, and then last year we we up one hunted a decent amount in the afternoons, mostly because waterfowl was so damn tough. I had to I had to have something to go take the guys to do some days. But yeah, um, yeah like it was. It, I mean. You know, I don't think there's a secret out there. If you talk to any outfitters across the country, they'll probably say last season was pretty tough. So, yeah. um, we did a lot of upland hunting, but like I said, I, that was my first time. I had flushed a few cubbies of quail in the past, but it was my first time uh, shooting one, um, and then and then subsequently more after that. But yeah, man, that um, <laughs> and so I haven't done it over a pointer yet. So that's kind of my next next thing to see you know how that is but but i really really like the quail hunting my dad grew up quail hunting in mississippi and and really talked about that growing up as a kid and it's just something i never really got to experience until until last year and we kind of we've had some good quail hatches over the last three three years in my area i mean like i saw multiple cubbies of 30 40 quail last year yeah and, and and there may be a couple of those on one 80 acre property or you know, 160 acre property. So decent, you know, decent wild quail numbers. So I'm, I'm excited yeah. to, I'm hoping, hoping they have another good hatch this year because I'm excited to go chase more quail. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Wait, do you, so you ran just retrievers in general? Yeah, I have, right? me personally, I just have labs. Okay. So I have a black lab, which I was just telling you about. His name's Diesel big boy and then tyler obviously has his two goldens which most listeners know but god it's such a, it's just a, such a struggle for me to hear you talk about it because i'm such a lab guy he's my third one and this year um i'm switching switch to a poodle pointer yeah and man like I, so, so what's your one yeah that's my, reasoning was, what's I, your reason my reasoning was uh my wife was one okay um she wants to try something different and she likes the fact that a poodle pointer isn't <laughs> shed as much. Yeah. And will it, will it get the job done that I want? And it will. I've hunted with one um, from the breeder that I'll get one from. And right. dog is dog is phenomenal. I mean, Good. it's a great dog. Um, and, and I mean, that doesn't mean my dog, but my dog is suck shit. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. <laughs> um, but his dog was fucking real good. And so I agreed, like, hey, this is what we'll do. But, like, I hear you guys talk about retrievers, and, man, I'm just like, ah. Dude, I'm kind, like, of a, damn. I'm, kind of a, I'm kind of a snob on that subject, honestly. And, and no offense to Tyler and his, <laughs> and, his, and his Goldens because, like. No, Goldens, I mean. Goldens, I, like, Goldens are great dogs. They just kind of were bred for show lines for a long time. So they hard finding to find a good. good hunting line Golden. Is not oh. easy to do it, it, perfectly fine when so you listen, find one. So listen, in two weeks, listen to our podcast because it's a good one coming out about uh, not those, yeah. about goldens, about yeah. being bred to hunt instead of right. bred to look good. I mean, yeah. I, well, I, I, I think I was I was bred 
uh, for both, I think. <laughs> I don't think so, but... <laughs> or maybe half ass at each. Yeah, whatever. I mean, it's whatever you want to believe, right? <laughs> my, my thing on that is, like, quit trying to reinvent the wheel. You see people do this all the time because, because they want something different. There's a reason Labrador Retrievers are so damn popular because it works. You know, it it's like, it's like, you know, and, you know, I, I'm not for one second, I'm not going to say there's not good Boykins out there and Poodle Pointers and Chesapeake Bay Retrievers 100%. and Goldens. Like, they exist, okay? I'm not saying they don't, so don't send me a message saying, you asshole, <laughs> my Chesapeake Bay Retriever is the baddest dog ever. He may be, but I'm saying the odds are in your favor if you go with a proven yep. breed and bloodline to get what you're looking for. So that's exactly. kind of my spiel exactly. on that, but whatever. Do, do, no, do, I, do. I, I think Tyler and I both, Tyler, Tyler and I both agree with you. Um, Tyler turned his dogs into um, amazing hunting dogs. And then I sent my dog away to have it turned him into amazing hunting dog. And turned out he was a, he was a badass, and we competed in some hunting contests and we ended up, <laughs> winning everything we fucking did so i mean now hey. you're gonna turn his back turn your back on him yeah nah fuck i can't believe it nick no i, I know nobody gets a point of there so i like i think they're cool looking dogs i just never hunted with one so you know I mean, they may be, they may be it's, freaking it's, awesome it's, i don't it, know you know it's it's still one of those things that it weighs on me because like it just weighs on me it just weighs on me well, i've always, sucks, I've always been a go lab. back to labs yeah. well, well no so <laughs> My wife actually said, well, I don't want anything to happen to Diesel, but when he goes and if this dog is any good, then you can just give it the fuck you want. And I was like, okay, as long as we have that understanding that, like, if this isn't what I fucking want, and it turns so out to suck, shit works out. then you can just cuddle with him in the bed and I'll just go back to my original plan. My, dude, so, I will tell you, I will tell you, like, my, like, my one real big pet peeve and that is guys getting pointers to be retrievers so like, oh yeah oh I, i'm getting a gsp because they're super versatile and he's going to be all around like no he's not that gsp gsp is going to die when it's 20 degrees outside and he's wet and he has to sit 100%. still because he's yeah. not made for that no yeah. um now wire hairs kind of the exception um another dog breaking in here um wire hairs are kind of the exception just because they do have a little bit better coat but they're still pointers man they're made to run and roll so yeah. on a yeah. slow duck hunt sitting them on a stand how do you think that's going to go i want to want to find out wanna... <laughs> what's up what do you say Said i don't want to find out yeah, i mean well, look again well, wait you look at tyler room. he's con he's constantly fucking cold he's bald man <laughs> that is true. I am literally no hair on short of hair head. of duck hunters. You're, ta you're talking to your short hair. Well, I'm almost there. That's like I mean, I'm I'm almost there. I mean, I'm got, touching him. Got a little insulation. I so got we were hunting. There. We hunted geese last year, and it was negative negative ten without wind chill. And man, my goldens they were sitting in the in the blinds, and the sun was just like come right in the blinds they're both passed out i'm like they can handle the cold it's not oh, gonna yeah. bother them you know yeah. any any of the retriever specific breeds like that's what they're built for <laughs> i mean yeah, yeah. it's yeah. funny that you brought this up i i, I told tyler this too uh, a couple of years ago it was a couple of years ago now i went to uh i got asked to do a hunt contest it was basically you get so many shells your initials on them mm -hmm. you get so you get 10 birds, 20 shells, I think it was, and you go hunt. Well, we went out and we fucking did this hunt. I was hunting with uh, a gentleman that had a beach line. And it was fucking cold. Dog got one bird, and Diesel and I got eight birds out of this thing. And I was like, dude, I'm like, what are you doing? He's like, my dog won't hunt. It's too cold. It's too fucking cold. She won't hunt. And, and, and we, lost, we ended up getting, well, I think we ended up getting third on it because he shot twice and i don't know they count shells and shit but anyway i was like dude i'm like if you would your dog would even hunted like a quarter instead of like just fucking like 
one bird worth. A half a, a half of a fucking quarter. Like, who would have won this goddamn thing? Because nobody got full birds in our thing, you know. And and we dominated it. Like, Diesel was just fucking on fire. We just, I mean, you only got an hour, so yeah, to get eight birds in an hour is pretty phenomenal. Pretty damn good. And I'm, yeah. I, I remember, I remember telling Tyler about this. That I was like, <laughs> I'll never in. Not that they're a bad dog, but I just saw that Avisla. He just shut the fuck down. I was like, <laughs> I'm, "Yeah, that's another one I've never." Heard <laughs> I'll of. never fucking. Yeah. That pissed me off. I was pissed. I was like, "What the hell, man?" Yeah. And I no, to know, our man. listeners, I do not think they're bad dogs. They're great dogs. Just, just that one sucks. I just had a bad <laughs> experience. You know? That's right. And so that's it's okay. That... There are Labradors that suck too. Oh yeah. Oh, hundred percent there are. Hundred percent there are. No, I I don't know. Dogs are, I don't know. I, I guess the only thing I'm saying is get a dog that's bred for what you want it to do. Yeah, that's that's all. Agreed. Do you uh, how do you guys schedule your your hunts? Do you start at the beginning of the season or do you wait till later uh, in the no, season? I mean, yes. Um, <laughs> uh, now we we just kind of start slower, so we do we do smaller groups early season. Because um, okay. I mean, like with any decent weather, we can go out and and put together a good duck hunt for four guys, which is what we start out with in early November, and then and then we wait until Thanksgiving to to ramp up to to run in two groups consecutively and uh, bumping group numbers up from there. Um, What's the max so, group number you have? Man, what a that's a question right there, right? Um, so uh, six to eight is what I tell guys, but you know, if you and Nick call me and say, Hey, we're gonna book a hunt for six of us, or uh, sorry, eight of us for these dates, and you and you tell me that right now on April 27th, right? Well, then you call me back on August 15th and say, Hey, Wade, um, we got two more buddies, man, and they really want to come on the hunt. It's your group, bro. If you want to hunt with ten people, like, okay. Um, yeah. Now, two of them might be sleeping on air mattresses, but <laughs> you don't, you don't, you don't know Tyler very well. We'd be like, hey, wait, we got six people. We call you back and say, hey, wait, it's just, it's just Tyler and Nick. <laughs> 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 I got we, no fucking left, we left everybody else. Fuck you guys. We're just going. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, six, six to eight is what we is what we shoot for. Really, six to me is like the perfect group size to where. Because I, I like it where, you know, you, you see some of these guys and, and more power to them that run 12, 14, 15, 20 clients in a blind at a time. And, like, to me, that's just no fun, man. You got to text yeah. message the dude on the other side of the blind to tell him something. How hard hey, is it? How you hard see, is you it see anything down there? I sent you an email. Right. Yeah. yeah, exactly. How hard is it to what? How uh, hard is it to manage, like, the, the larger groups when you get them in? It's not most that difficult of most of the time. I, like it kind, of, it kind of goes back to what we were talking about a while ago. Like the bulk of our guys that come hunt with us no, are no. legit duck hunters, and and they'll you know they'll, and they'll police themselves too. Yeah, um, that's nice. You know, I, before a hunt, I give the same spiel every time. You know, guns on safety. You know, we're gonna follow the rules like one of y'all are an undercover game warden because, as far as I know, one of y'all are an undercover game warden. Um, you know, just just general hunt rules, shoot your lanes, all these yeah. kind of things. Do not shoot until the guide calls a shot. Uh, so if you see, like, if, if there's somebody that's kind of pushing things, like, there's usually going to be another guest in the blind that's going to hit that dude with the elbow and be like, hey, bro, quit screwing up, or, you know, you're going to mess this up for all of us. So very, is it, very is, rarely do I ever have to say anything. Is it scary – like bring that many people in like i've hunted with some folks before who um in specifically one i can think it was back when my dad was my dad was teaching me squirrel hunt. he took a buddy with me and uh you know it was always no finger on the trigger and we had a lever action you don't pull the lever action back until you're ready to shoot that type of thing right but we found out that this kid that we we're hunting with he was hunting with the lever action already back and he was walking with it, you know, gun in the air, you know, and he was trying to hold in the right spots, but right when the gun's ready to fucking fire, I yeah, mean, you're, it's scary. You're one, it's scary, one right? Step closer to an accident. 
So, no, dude, I, um, I, I really don't run into too many issues with it. To be honest with you, I'm pretty open and upfront with guys. Like, you know, if you do something to put somebody else in danger, you're done. Um, if it's, yeah. you know, if you're, if you're blatantly not following safety rules and stuff like that, like I'll give you your money back and you, and you can leave that like, plain and simple. If it's an accident, you know, we're going to talk about it. Uh, and you know, and if it happens again, it's going to be a little more stringent, but acts, you know, like, okay, you forgot to put your gun back on safety. One of the other guys saw it. Okay, man. Like just remember. And, you know, obviously we're going to kind of peek down there and take a look or, or I'm going to tell kind of the leader of the group, hey, man, keep an eye on Nick. He, he, I noticed he forgot he, to put his gun on safety one time, man. Just want to keep everybody safe. And, you know, he just, he just talk to people like regular free yeah. people and, and yeah. they, they act right. Man, I remember when I was going through the <laughs> police academy and obviously do firearms training. And uh, I don't remember what exactly the situation was. Um, but one of the big things was don't put your finger on the trigger until you're ready to shoot. And we, it was like fire three rounds or fire two rounds. I can't remember exactly what it was, but it was boom, boom, boom. And I had the instructor standing right behind me. I didn't know he was there and did not take my finger off the trigger, which I like never, Ooh, never do. And man. Did I get my ass reamed? And I have never, since that point, you will never see my finger on the trigger until it's ready. Like, I mean, you and he was like, how many here now? He was, he was a, fucking blown up. Yeah, he was an old, an ex Marine. And yep. man, he let me freaking have it. And Dude, that's, that's how it was for me growing up. My dad was, was Army in Vietnam and, and uh and it was just i mean he's freaking awesome but he's he's, he's a hard ass yeah um, and like if you got caught doing something unsafe with a gun like your ass was done <laughs> you were going to the truck and you know you just didn't do it like yeah, it you learned not to fuck up you, real you, quick you, yeah. you, can, you can say it on here you got the fucking paddle or the belt you know, you did. <laughs> oh yeah my dad with my ass he wouldn't think twice about it uh, but, i'll never but, forget I, my dad gave me a, a, a BB gun that he had. So he's handed it down to me. And I'll never forget, I had two friends. They were, like, on each side of me. They were pretty close and obviously questionable on my part. But I was, I don't know, I don't even know how old I was. But there was seven. a bird. Yeah, seven, fucking eight, six, I don't even know. But I pointed the gun right between them. I pointed, yeah, I pointed, the gun, I pointed the BB gun right between them. And my dad fucking saw it. And, <laughs> That's you ass. know, oh man, gun gone, fucking friends oh. go home. Like, he had him over for fun, and he put the kids in the car, threw the gun away, took the kids home, and I'm, you know, what? Well, I'm, like, I think, I'm done. I think like, I you're screwed, done. Yep. You're done. If I you ain't screwed, doing shit. If I ever screwed anything up, hunting, like, I don't think my dad would have whipped my ass for that. He whipped my ass for a lot of stuff. But he wouldn't have whipped my ass for that. He'd have just told me I couldn't go hunting no more. And Which that was is way worse than I had. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> so, yeah, so no, we we grew up we grew up really really meticulous about gun safety and shit like that. So I think it's you know what it, teach it young. You know and, what? Not to, yeah, not to switch subjects or get negative or anything, but I think that's a lot of problem with the world today. Like a lot of this gun stuff, you know, I think it needs to revolve around the parents, and it's the foundation of growing up. Like. Oh yeah. Hey, you know this is dangerous. This is what a gun is. This is this is how you handle it. You know, because I think what well, happens is I think kids. I think I think people get. I think young individuals get curious because they're not around it. Yeah. And when they get curious, they want to actually see what it can do. And you, as a parent and as an adult, you need to take that about. If you don't know how it works, you need to go figure out how the fuck it works, and then you need to take that, and, and then you need to, and educate them educate your kids like hey this is definitely a serious like this is not a joke this is right. absolutely fucking serious and i know my daughters are like i'll bring my guns out and you know it's automatically this is daddy's this is not yours you can look you cannot touch those like even the shells you cannot touch this is mine um so i'm already starting to associate them with like the dangers of what's going on but then I also want to associate them once they get older to handle a gun. 
Right. You know, and I'm not an expert. I'm not an expert. This is just me. Everybody has different. Well, you don't have to be an expert to be safe with guns. No, I know, but you I know. don't want this podcast to come off like, oh, Nick's an expert. It's probably what he's doing. Oh, no, yeah. no, no, no. This is just what I'm doing I'm myself, trying to make sure that, I, you know, I show my daughters my kills. Like, I, like Tyler, I, I'll never forget this. I sent him a picture after I went out on a solo hunt and I killed one bird and I came in and my face, I'm trying to show my daughters and my wife got a picture of it and my daughters look scared as shit. But I look like I'm happy as shit that they're touching. I'm like, oh yeah. <laughs> well, and I think like, I think that's an important part of it too, because you know, for a kid that grows up hunting or at least in a hunting family, and they see what that gun does to the the animal that they eat, like that's just that much more appreciation that they have for a firearm and exactly. and the effects that it can have. But so so it's not something they saw in a video game this is a real life used yep. to be living animal and they know hey this can equal this if you don't pay attention to what you're doing so it's a healthy respect yep. for it is. and I, th- I think honestly you know a lot of it i'll put on the parents but i also think like guns in general like having like i think the schools and i don't know what the statistics are if you look at schools that do like trap shooting and things oh, of that yeah. nature I would almost bet that their gun safety and like uh, people shooting people rate is lower oh, yeah. than schools that don't have that type of thing going on. And I would like to look at stats because I think like well, I've, 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 I've seen some of it. So uh, you're which, are both y'all in Iowa? Yeah. Yeah. All right. So there's an organization called Outdoor Mentors. It, it was here in Kansas, and now they're in Iowa, and they work with. Uh, these trap shooting clubs and stuff like that from the schools to get kids out hunting. And so I, so I take out a bunch of kids from this program every year and just going off of their, their publications and stuff like that. So trap shooting apparently is like the safest high school sport. So, you know, if you're not counting chess club or something like that, but Compared you can throw, throw a pawn right across the fucking table, though. <laughs> yeah. I mean, don't start no shit, won't be no shit. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, but, yeah, but so trap shooting clubs in high school are, like, the safest high school sport out there. Um, now, you, obviously, you're not but tearing out ACLs and stuff like that when you take that against football or soccer or something like that. But, but yeah, so it, it – but it does prove your point that the kids with that exposure – are learning gun safety at an earlier age and they're learning to be safe with it and treat them with respect and stuff like that versus just what you learn from call of duty and i love call of duty but you need to have that it real teaches, life experience too. i think it teaches curiosity that's what i think oh hell teaches. yeah yeah like what the fuck I mean, can this thing do like dude, actually I'm, what can this do you know i'm I mean? 40 and i'm still curious about guns i love <laughs> them i think they're cool as shit. yeah yeah but they are cool but, shit. You know, at least i know how to handle them and so does my nine-year-old and so does my 15 year old you know yep 100 yep. percent. so definitely so we give us a couple of your best so we kind of got off track for a little bit from well like what you do and everything but <laughs> give us give us some of your this yeah. is what he does. He bullshits. Yeah, yeah this, this is what I do. <laughs> I sit in a duck blind and have these exact same conversations. <laughs> just minus the makers. Yeah. With a lot cooler uh, backgrounds. Uh, no shit. So some of my give best us, what, Nick? Hunting, give, give us some of your best hunting, hunting stories. What? What's some of your shit. favorite? Just give Man, us two. You, got, you, got, you got two to three you can choose from. That's where I'll cut you off. I'll so just try I, to pin it down so, for you. Like I'm, I always suck at stuff like this. Like if I got my buddies around and we're and we're like talking through different things, like it's easy. Then um, I will see. I'll tell you my favorite hunt from last year. I'll start with that, and then maybe I can think of some more. Um, so last year's favorite hunt, we were hunting like this, like little eighth of an acre cattle pond. Um, had some cottonwood trees around, and it was super fog, like freezing fog that morning. So these ducks were just like appearing out of nowhere, like at forty yards. Um, and I think we had like a 48 duck born in that morning, all in an hour, <laughs> hour and a half of shooting, something <laughs> like that. And it was just, it was bad. It was, it was awesome. Um, I'm trying to think of some funny duck hunting store or just hunting oh, tell us, in general. Tell us this. Uh, so you 
were lucky enough your first season and your second season to hunt with the grind waterfall TV. Yeah. So tell us about one, when they called you up to hunt there, what was going through your mind that first season and then just like how it expired from there. So you'd actually have to go back a couple of years to okay. get to that point. So uh, the guys from Cornerstone, obviously, you know, you're, you're involved with Cornerstone and, and I've kind of been involved with Cornerstone for the five years that they've been been around, um, I think like last week was five years or maybe two weeks ago. Uh, but so Keith and Josh Farvin through Cornerstone and, and stuff like that uh, had become friends of ours and had come out and hunt with us a couple of times um, while I was still in the Air Force. Um, so, um, you know, 52 plus when it when it launched and they started doing the, the weekly uh cornerstone minutes on the grind um you know they wanted to kind of culminate that with with violet the the dog that's in all the videos from 52 plus with josh they wanted to bring together a hunt for that well when that all started coming to play I, by that point i was i was running hunts full time and mr keith and josh had had already come out and brought another group of of CGA members out to hunt with us. Um, and so Mr. Keith reached out to me and said, Hey, Wade, um, we got to film an episode of the grind with Violet and we'd like for you to host that, um, or, you know, to host the hunt. It's like, okay, that's cool. I mean, you know, I, the grind is my favorite hunting TV show and it has been for a long time. Legit. So, yeah. So like, it's really cool. I was, I was pretty, you know, starstruck at that point. Um, but I was like, okay, cool. You know, what the, you know, what days are you thinking? He's like, no, not days, day. I said, what? He's like, we got January 26th is the day that we can be there and the, the grind crew can be there. I was like, oh, so shit. you're telling me <laughs> the first time I'm going to ever put a hunt on television, I have one shot. And he's like, <laughs> He's like, I, I believe in you. You'll make it happen. I was like, shit. Yeah, <laughs> so, well, the birds so, made it. <laughs> yeah, so, but, dude, it couldn't have worked out any better. We killed, like, a six-man limit of mallards that morning, and it was just, I mean, the most perfect conditions you could have ever asked for. Uh, this year, when the grind hunted with me, was not the same. <laughs> um, you know, and we'll see. I don't know what all is going to make the episode. We'll see when it airs, but I mean, we were hunting flowing ice chunks in the river oh. and like a cattle pond that I spent the night on in my truck running the ice ripper. Um, you look, just you look like you live on a cattle pond, though. You look yeah. like you live on a cow pond, though. I mean, got that big old fucking beard. December and January, I pretty much do. <laughs> um, but uh, but yeah, so it was really tough conditions. We killed a few birds, but it wasn't it wasn't you know lights out by any means but um that crew man i mean bill Wilroth from dakota uh the lucky duck guys luke Cramlett was here from lucky duck and then jake cherry from artera media and, and their crew and those dudes are just the most awesome down to earth easy going like it's just like sitting in the wild with your buddies there just happens to be a camera rolling so it's yeah. like it's really it's awesome. I'm super honored to be able to do that, especially like last year being my first year of, of guiding. Like I, I, that was pretty cool. Um, but like the, the hunt with them itself is, it's just like hunting with anybody else, man. Um, yeah. You know, if, awesome. sometimes uh, the TV show needs the guy that can't hit shit and the guy that likes to talk shit <laughs> to come down. Tyler and I got you guys covered. Yeah, the good well, thing we, is, we don't is when I shoot, days. usually the angle of the camera can't tell which bird I'm actually shooting at, so it still looks like I hit it. Yeah. So at the end of the day, Very I will have it missed. <laughs> so, I just don't know if you hit it or not. Yeah. So have, you guys, have, you, not. have either of you guys ever been on a guided duck hunt? Have not, and that's what we want to do. Guided upland hunt? It. I, well, uh, I mean, like at a pheasant farm, but not like. Yeah, I got it out. I pay for my birds and I take my own dog. And it's yeah. just like, so I actually did you're just, one. You're just paying for the spot. 
Well, no. So actually, I actually used to guide for Story City Worth Worth Woods Hunting Preserve um, in Iowa. Here, uh, nice. met him first. Moved down to Des Moines five years ago. Um, was just trying to get my dog out, and he asked me to guide. And I met some boys from Louisiana who do a lot of white uh, snow goose hunting. They love diesel. Uh, <laughs> my dog. Anyway, long story short, uh, this year he contacted me and said he was having pheasants forever. They had like. 30 guys come out to hunt and then he said hey i know you're busy had two kids why don't you just come out and you know pay for what you get so basically that's what i did i went out and hunted and paid for we, uh, paid for my bird i shot him and i came back and i paid for my birds after that so i did right. i do that and i and i know tyler does that as well just to get our dogs up and running before oh hell season, yeah because um it's good for them to get out and run so i was like yeah hell yeah so that's the only type of like guided bird hunt that I think Tyler and I have done. I've never done like guided duck hunt. Or, I was gonna, I, mean, I don't even know. I was gonna ask y'all like, so this is always a hot topic. Would you prefer, and I'll tell you what we do, but would you prefer your guide shoot on a guided duck hunt or just the guest shoot? You can shoot. Nick? I don't care, but I think if you're being the guy, I don't think you should shoot. Fair enough. So I'll tell you what we do. So pretty much every morning before the hunt, you know, we're sitting there talking to the guys. We're going to tell them like, hey, here's what we usually do. But it's your choice. You know, if there's twos or threes or a single come in, like the guys aren't going to shoot. Right. But if there's big groups of birds, then, you know, we usually all shoot just so we can, you know, get more birds on it. <laughs> And are you then, guys sitting on the ends? Typically, yeah. Yeah. I mean, maybe, maybe not. Like, if I've got if I got a guest that has a dog, like, say you brought your dog out there. Yeah. Like, I'm gonna sit one spot inside of you in the A frame. That way, you can sit right there on the end with your dog, um, or or the other guy will if I'm on the other end with my yeah. dog or or whatever. But but yeah, so that's that's the spiel we always tell guys. And like, I would say ninety percent of the groups will be like hell no you better shoot every group that comes in help us not burn down um like funny enough the one time my guys forgot to say that before a hunt last year the, the, the one of the clients that they had with them wasn't real happy that they were shooting i was like well, they should have talked to you about that ahead of time yeah but we we, we talked it over and everything was kosher but yeah i always kind of like to poll people on on how they feel about like do you want the guy to shoot with you or not? Yeah, I, mean, I don't think the no, guy should be if they're like you said, a single or a double being like shoot yeah. him and pop up and he's taking yeah, no, it. You know, absolutely not. Like, it's Especially like, if the if the guest. So I mean, but if I was a guy, I might do that. Yeah, Nick doesn't. <laughs> Nick doesn't wait for anything. I don't wait for anybody. <laughs> hey, that bird is fucking close. You ain't taking it. It's mine. Goddamn it! <laughs> so, I, I, before before I got it, I had like a rule: if a, if a speckle belly goose or a pintail came in. Like the only warning you were gonna get was my safety clicking off. Yeah. I, I'm not saying shit. I'm standing up and shooting them. <laughs> right. But now, Wait, now I, gave I, it, I, a bit. I had a we had a, in South Dakota. We had a hell of a hunt. And for a reason, my dog was just on fire, and I shot my limit birds and said, "All right, I'm not shooting anymore. I'm not gonna do it. Done." Well, God damn it, fucking bird got in front of me again i was like waiting for everybody else to shoot nobody shoots nobody shoots and i felt like it was forever um it was like a split I fucking, second i yeah, fucking right. shot <laughs> the bird blows up <laughs> you know oh it's one five seconds and the bird's right. mangled and they're like i thought you were gonna shoot anymore i said i thought you were gonna shoot like yeah. what are you doing <laughs> so I, mean, I will say look dude there's times like you, you get certain groups in and, and they you know they just struggle to shoot you know everybody yeah. has a bad day i get it but like it'll be one of those i don't, days I, don't like, know. I don't have a bad day i missed the first one but that's, that's the second shell's coming out quick yeah i'll, I'll look down at behind the blind at the other guy and i'll be like shoot him shoot yeah. like, we're gonna be here all day Help yeah him. <laughs> don't get that many birds <laughs> yeah, yeah i mean that'd be you know, tough. birds but dang man uh, yeah you but, yeah, that's but you know, a lot of guys that go on a guided duck hunt. This, I mean, this may be the only duck hunt they have all year. Um, yeah. So I know uh, the first year that that I waterfowl hunted, uh, I actually I really struggled with 
the bird coming down and then yeah. backpedaling up because it, it used to this the, the steady bus climb and the, then yeah, yeah you know and it's yeah. it's just different it's they're slower but then they're gaining speed and you know yeah. and uh, it's just a different way of hunting. That's one but, thing I I mean I, that's one thing I love about waterfowl hunting is like there's so many variations to how the shot's going to go. Like, you know, you may have divers come scream by or teal yeah. or, or whatever. And then you may have a mallard that is just hovering over the lucky duck. And you're like, Oh man. And then you whiff <laughs> on the damn thing. Yeah. You know? um, or, or you get big geese. Like I, I so I, I, complete transparency. I wasn't a goose hunter. I've never been a goose hunter. Uh, I didn't really get, kind of serious about trying to kill geese until five years ago <laughs> so like when big geese would come in and they'd be like on approach into a pond or something i'd be watching them and watching them and watching them and then you know i'd call the shot and we'd stand up and as soon as you are looking down your gun barrel for like comparison you're like, oh shit, those geese are like 50 yards. Yeah. <laughs> but but they're so big, and I'm so used to looking at ducks that I think they're like 20 yards. <laughs> yeah. And then I yeah. stand up and I'm like, son of a gun. <laughs> That's gonna be a shot. <laughs> yeah. Now, so a guy like me, I used to have waiters. I don't anymore. Do you have waiters I can rent or do I have to bring my own? You, you don't or am even I gonna even need them? Uh, I, need them. I that's what I tell everybody. Like, you bring knee boots, um, but if you have waders, cool. Bring them if you want to, but don't go buy a pair of waders to come hunt with us. Um, we're we're always on dry land, um, and you know the guys will go out and put put out decoys and pick up decoys in the water, um, and then so you know knee boots are good, but you don't you don't need waders. Yeah, but I I almost want to bring the waders though because I like the experience. I, I yeah, wanna, like I'd, I'd want to go out with you and I'd like to go out with you and put out deeks. I don't. I mean. Uh, I can remember doing it back in the day, and I think he like made like a J, like you, you know. Yeah. And then I just like to uh, honestly, I just you want to be a part of the hunt. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I just get stir crazy, fucking sitting there anyway. Yeah. So no, that's dude. That's and and it, again it goes back to the same conversation we had a while ago. Like when we set our pricing, that we wanted it to be somewhere where real duck hunters or real yeah. hunters could could afford to come out and hunt with us. And I would say ninety percent of our clients are picking up, putting out decoys. That's um, nice too. Yep. Oh yeah, dude. They they came here to hunt. Yep. Like they're they're paying me because I have guides to pay, gas to buy, gear to buy, and access to get. Because they they know damn good and well I'd do this for free if I didn't. Yeah. Speaking of that topic, coming here to hunt. So I guided out in South Dakota this year. I don't even know if I'd call it guiding, but that's what they called it uh, at a pheasant place. And it wasn't really guiding. It was more it was, of it was, it was getting. driving people around. <laughs> right. And they, they they literally had the fields. They had milo fields and corn fields. And out in South Dakota, corn only gets to about knee high. Mm. You know, and they're corn. yeah, they're you know they're I don't know fifty yards wide by eighty yards long, and you would literally side you'd have a side by side. Uh, with like top seats and then you have a trailer behind it and you drive people out to these fields you'd put them all the way around the field and then as a guide you would there's like five guides per group four guides per group you'd release i don't even know how many dogs were running in these fields just multiple dogs and it was right. just all you'd the set dogs. out birds and all these birds flying <laughs> up i mean it's not even hunting you know it's getting um, i just said yeah, yeah honey's getting he These guys were just like, hey, we're just out here to shoot birds, shit, you know. Here, you yeah. know like, they're not. Go get them. They're not looking to yeah. actual hunt, but no, that's that's funny. And, so, and you know, and we get guys like that too. Like I've had, I've had guys sit in the truck and watch us put out decoys at five thirty yeah. in the morning, and you know, whatever, it's their hunt. They're still, I'm not they're still fucking out. sleep. They're still sleeping. Man. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, they're probably hung over. Yeah, too many beers the night before. <laughs> yeah, well, that that could also be me, but I would still get up and fucking work. Well, that's like, that's another. I feel like of, shit and complain the whole fucking day, but I would still get up. Yeah. Like, we'll get. Tyler we'll knows get, this. We'll get a group of like six or eight dudes, and one or two guys will get really, really happy.